Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're gonna try to talk about that new FCC rule change regarding station evaluation for emissions. Now, what does it mean to amateur radio? Well, not as bad as some people think. There are some changes, and they're important ones, and we're going to try to cover those, but most importantly, we're going to try to show you what you'll need to do to evaluate your own station. Anyway, ah, do me a favor, will you? I love doing these videos, uh, but uh, it really helps my views if you go ahead and subscribe. So if you would, click the subscribe button, and uh, hey, click on the little bell there, and it'll tell you when I have new videos out. With that, let's go ahead and check out the show. Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and let's go ahead and check out that new FCC rule change regarding our station evaluations. So, the new rules go in effect May 3rd, 2021. Anything before May 3rd, 2021 that you've done to evaluate your stations, or if the stations were exempt, you don't have to worry about doing your evaluation at all up until May 3rd, 2023. They've given us a two-year time period to get this done. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why. It's not that difficult to do, although if you're out of compliance, I imagine there'd be some stuff that you'd need to do. First things first, I'm going to put up on the screen here links to some of the documents that I've used to kind of try to figure this out. I say figure it out because there's a lot of information out there, but none of it is really conclusive on what we need to do to certify our stations. Um, anyway, I've got four links up here. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, three of them are FCC and one of them is ARRL. ARRL, I think, sums it best with uh, the fact that the information coming out of the FCC is not really conclusive. So most of what we're all going to be talking about, everyone that's talking about this, is a little bit of conjecture, okay? Um, what, uh, what's important is that I'm going to show you how I believe a station should be evaluated, all right, uh, the evaluations, there's another thing that a lot of people don't understand. The evaluations aren't going to have to be sent in to the FCC. No, 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 no. What you're going to do is you're going to list your equipment and evaluate that equipment and those bands. Uh, and you'll need to just keep a record of that in your station. So, there's a, there's a few different things that we need to understand about the changes. Uh, first off, there's no such thing as a blanket ex exemption, which is what amateur radio operators had before. There used to be a power limit, and then anything under that power limit uh, listed in PEP or peak envelope power was exempt. You didn't have to do any calculations. You know, basically you stick a watt meter on the output of your radio, and if it's under that level, doesn't matter what antenna you have, where it is, anything else, you know, you don't have to do an evaluation. Well, um, you can see where that might be a little problematic. Um, now, the FCC, of course, trusts us to do the right thing. Okay, we're trained radio operators as amateur radio professionals, quote unquote. Uh, the uh, important thing to remember is they're relying on us to protect ourselves and our neighbors. Okay, uh, the changes in what we have to do in order to prove that we're doing that are not really that big. And we're going to go over how to do that for sure. Um, one of the things that is kind of important is uh, some of the exemptions that are permanently taken away, such as mobile and portable radios. Well, they're not quite taken away. Um, we used to not even have to consider a mobile radio. All right, now we have to evaluate our mobile radios, okay? Um, we'd never had to consider a portable radio. 
Well, that's a whole nother can of worms, and I'll go into that in a minute. But let's talk about the mobile radios. Uh, and let me give you the definition of a mobile radio. A mobile radio has nothing to do with whether it's an HT or whether it's a, uh, a uh, uh, you know, mobile uh, uh, VHF, UHF radio. It doesn't matter what defines the difference between a mobile radio and a portable radio is this. A mobile radio's antenna is more than 20 centimeters away from any human at all times, okay? A portable radio may be closer than 20 centimeters at any given time, okay? So, if we're looking at something like an HT or something like that, this radio definitely, when we're talking on it, is under 20 uh, centimeters. When we're talking about our, uh, our mobile rigs, right? Uh, well, you know, it's more, that antenna, you can see the antenna there on the back of my car, that's more than 20 meters. So the mobile rigs, we have to evaluate to see if they fall under the new exemptions or whether they meet the criteria for uh, uh, maximum uh, exposure, okay? And we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, now, if the HT or the portable radio, which is under 20 centimeters, is in question, the FCC requires what's called a SAR verification, S-A-R. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technology of that or anything else, but it more or less is an extremely expensive certification that is, needs to be done in a lab with extremely expensive equipment. And uh, the manufacturer will be responsible for certifying their products from May 3rd, 2021 forward. The manufacturer gets a pass. In other words, the older uh, HTs in the um, uh, VHF range get a pass on that SAR certification if the manufacture date is before May 3rd, 2021. Okay, so that kind of takes care of the, uh, the portables. We're not really going to worry about them. You're more than welcome to learn how to do these calculations, though, and you can calculate what that HT might actually be putting out. So that's, a, that's an important piece of information for you. Um, okay, so this is my car. So today, in this video, the example we're going to use is my car, okay? Um, I have a mobile radio in here, and I'm going to evaluate my two-meter mobile service that I have in the car. Uh, since it's no longer exempt, it was the obvious thing for, uh, obvious thing for me to look at first, right? So, um, let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, first off, we need to determine distance between the antenna and humans. And here's an example of how you would measure this. Now, this is a uh, base antenna, okay? But if you notice, okay, uh, what you're seeing on this base antenna is that the antenna measurement is taking place from the center of the antenna, uh, the antenna. In other words, the uh, center of the conductive part of the antenna to the closest point of the person that is in proximity to it. You know, and of course, we can uh, definitely use all sorts of formulas to figure this out. Uh, certainly, uh, we can use uh, height squared plus uh, base squared to determine um, uh, uh, what the the angle squared or the distance squared is to that person, okay? But uh, that's, that's for a math channel. Anyway, um, so what we need to do is I need to determine here what the distance is from the center of my antenna to, well, the closest point, which happens to be the head of the passenger uh, that sits right behind it on the uh, driver's rear seat. Okay, now I kind of made some uh, <clears throat> notes here just for me. Uh, the back seat, uh, the distance to 
anyone in the back sheet that's riding in the back sheet is one meter or greater. Anybody riding in the front seat is two meters or greater. Okay, so I can do my calculations based on that, right? So here's the deal though. I need to uh, do a little bit of research. First off, I've got to figure out what my ERP is at that antenna, okay? Yeah, you, we all should remember from our technician class our ERP formulas, right? Um, but just in case we don't, we'll go over that. Uh, the first thing I need to figure out though is might I qualify for an exemption just based on the frequency and the distance? And this is the chart that will allow me to do that, right? So if uh, first thing is I need to make the determination if the um, frequency in question, okay, is actually for the distance that we're talking about, I need to figure out what the absolute closest distance I can actually qualify for an automatic exemption, okay? And the exemption isn't really super automatic because you got to note that that's how you did your evaluation. This is a much quicker way to do it. Now that formula is way up at the top here where it says MPE-based exemptions and it has the uh, R or uh, distance, okay, uh, has to be greater than or equal to uh, lambda divided by 2 pi, okay? So let's go ahead and do that calculation, right? Lambda divided by 2 pi. So we're talking, we're just going to say this is, uh, what's lambda? Uh, that's going to be two meters, okay? So I'm just putting this here to, to keep notes. And I will basically take two and divide it by... To pi. Actually, that didn't work. Let me try that again. That's a problem with calculators. They don't exactly do everything that you think they should. 2 pi. There we go. Okay, so my minimum distance to qualify for a automatic exclusion, in other words, not have to do an actual evaluation, is uh, that would be 31 centimeters, right? So let's go over here. That's going to be min is 31 centimeters. Uh, actually, 32 if I round, right? There we go. All right. Well, I'm under 31 centimeters, right? So I might be able to qualify for that exemption. Now what I have to do is I have to calculate out my losses, right? So let's take a glance. I'm going to get a little piece of paper here out because I want to note this stuff to get it over in the scratch sheet. So first thing is um, I have to calculate my coax loss. So I'm going up here to the chart and I'm looking, I've got RG58, which is right on the top and we're at 144 megahertz, which is right next to it. And in parentheses is dB loss per 100 meters and outside of parentheses that 6.2 number that is dB loss per 100 feet. Now, knowing that, let's go back to our scratch sheet here. All right, so knowing that, let's write down, I'm going to just put 100 foot loss is 6.2. All right. Now, my coax is... A total of 18 feet. 
So I need to calculate what the actual DB loss is going to be. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and uh, clear out our calculator here. And I need to take my length, which is 18 feet. I need to divide that by 100. And that's going to give me a percentage right here of 0.18. Then if I multiply that by the 6.2 dB, that shows that my dB loss in the distance of coax is 100, or excuse me, 1.12. And let me write that down. 1.12 um, loss. Okay. All right, but hey, loss is good. That shows our power comes down, right? But you know what? I hate to tell you. I also have to look at gain, right? So my gain is based on the antenna that I have. Now, uh, I have a Comet uh, SBB5 half wave. Really neat antenna. Works really well if you don't have the ability to hook to a ground plane. Um, here's the specs on it. And I see that for two meters... I have a 3 dB gain. So let's uh, put down our antenna gain here at, let's see, 3.0 dB. All right, and I'll uh, switch back to that screen so you can see it. So I've added it right here. So now I can calculate out what my total loss and gain is. And the neat part about uh, dB is I can do math on using just the dB numbers and then run a single calculation to turn that into what my uh, uh, peak envelope, or excuse me, my uh, ERP is. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this out. So basically what I have is I have... 3.0 minus, and you know what? I'm going to round this uh, round this up or uh, down to 1.1. Why not? 1.1. That gives me my net gain for my ERP uh, uh, that I need to adjust to my uh, peak envelope power. Right is. 1.9 dB. Everybody following this? You should remember it from uh, your technician studies, okay? Uh, in order to get that license, hopefully that was something that you picked up. Now, all right, we're almost there. Honest, trust me. So we now have our net gain, right? Now I need to know what my PEP is. So my radio in the car, when it's keyed, it's FM, so it's 100% duty cycle, uh, puts out 10 watts, okay? So, let's work the ERP out. Basically, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at my wattage, which is 10, and I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the power of 1 point, uh, 10 to the power of, oh no, no, there we go, 1.9 divided by 10. Now, this is going to give me my net gain, which or excuse me, my ERP, my full power, which is 15.48, let's call it 15.5, okay? There we go. All right, so what do we got? Well, look at that. We've got all our numbers figured out. Now, here's what we need to do to evaluate if we fall under a generic exemption anymore, okay? 
we are going to take, of course, three point eight three, and we're going to multiply that by R, which is the distance in meters, which is one, or excuse me, it is, yes, the distance in meters, which is going to be one squared And let's go ahead and we'll get that into the calculator. 3.83 times 1 squared. Well, the maximum power that I could run under exemption. 3.83 watts. Now, where do we get that number? All right, so, and one second. If I go back and I look at this, right? R is in meters, F is in frequency. So, I don't have to do any division by frequency here. It's basically 3.83. Eight three times r squared, and you know what? R is one meter. That means that gives me the maximum amount of power that I can run, and I'm running more than that. I'm running 15.5. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to have to do an evaluation. All right, so what do we need to do for the evaluation? Well, you know what? Ironically, we've already done most of the work to do that calculation, okay? Um, and that calculation is this formula. Basically, it's your ERP over 4 pi cm squared. Now, a couple important things to remember on this. The ERP is in uh, milliwatts. And it's centimeters squared distance, okay? We were working with watts before, right? And meters, meters and formulas and all that in a default table. Now we're just going to do this, all right? But we have all the information already. So let's do, a, let's do a quick eval on this. So what I need to keep in this, of course, is I don't need any of this data anymore. I probably want to hold on to uh, the cable loss, uh, coax cable 18 feet, uh, my antenna gain, my net gain, and my radio, and my ERP. I'm going to get rid of this formula because that didn't help me at all. And I'm going to go ahead and run the calculation. So, again, we're going to take the current ERP, right? And ERP in this case is 15.5 watts, but I need to convert watts into milliwatts. I can either uh, multiply it by 1,000, of course, or I can just put a couple zeros on the end and remove the decimal point, right? Um, I'm going to divide that by 4 times pi times... One meter, that's a hundred centimeters oop, squared. And here's the magic number. My exposure at one meter under those power settings is 0 0.12, uh, rounded to 0 0.12. Uh, and that's the power density over centimeters, okay? Now, what does that mean? So let me list my power density. I'm just going to call it power density. And let's go to the chart. So 
we have two different exposures that we need to deal with here, okay? We have controlled exposure and then we have uncontrolled exposure. Let's talk about them both real quick. Controlled exposure is basically the exposure to people uh, that, like yourself, a ham radio operator, other ham radio operators, people in your immediate family that understand that you are transmitting a radio and, you know, if, uh, if, and they know better than to really go close to the antenna or closer to the antenna than you tell them, those are controlled. We go down here, we look for 30 to 300 uh, megahertz, and we go down to our power density, and it is 1.0, is the maximum allowed. All right. So, hey, my power density is 0 0.12. So maximum allowed for controlled is 1.0. You know what? I comply. I'm just writing that so I have that written over here when I come back to that screen. Let's take a look now for the uncontrolled group. The uncontrolled group, it's, there we are down here, that is 30 to 300 megahertz. Our power density is 0 0.2. So uncontrolled. And we're under that too, right? So we comply. Now, do I have to do it for the other areas in the car? Certainly not. If it's good for one meter, it's good for two meters, right? Now, let's talk a little bit about controlled and uncontrolled, all right? So let's say that I was running 50 watts. All right. Well, if I'm running 50 watts, then guess what? I'm going to qualify under controlled. We can do that real quick. Let's do a real quick uh, sheet on that. And what I'll do is I just have to recalculate my, um, my coax loss and gain. So what all I really need to do is I need to recalculate 50 times because 50 watts and this is going to be 10 to the power of 1.9 divided by 10. Got to close all my parentheses. I'm putting out 77 and a half watts right out of the radio. Amazing how you know that 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 works with uh, DBI right. Uh, so 77.5 is, I'm just noting it down here, but that's, that's my net, uh, net there. And I can actually just take this number, all right? And I can go ahead and let me uh, get to the right screen here, and I will select uh, divide that. And I'm going to divide that by 4 times pi. Kind of neat that I had the little pi button here on the calculator. Of course, you know that it'd be four times uh, um, 3.14. Um, times, and this is 100 to the power of 2. Uh, oh, what did I do wrong? Why is that number way off? Do you know? Take a look here. Take a look at that number. Boy, is that number wrong, right? That is watts. What did I say they had to be? Milliwatts, right? So let's clear that out. Let's fix that. 77, five, uh, 500 milliwatts, right? Silly me. Boy, would my face have been red. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 4 times pi times 10 to the power of, oh, not 10, it is 1 
100 to the power of 2. Look at that. All right. So at one, uh, uh, at one uh, meter, I conform, right? I've got a 0 0.61 power density. Under 10 watts, I had a uh, 0 0.12. I conform to control, so that means if it's people that I know in the back seat that are either other hams or members of my family that understand that control group is people that understand radio, uh, then they're okay to ride back there. I mean, they can turn around and say, hey, you know, you're keying that an awful lot. Um, but uncontrolled, technically, they're not supposed to be in the back seat, right? So how could I change that? How could I get it lower? Well, there's a couple different ways, obviously. Um, well, of course, you know, if I turn the power down, everything's fixed. And I can calculate out what that maximum power could be with somebody in the back seat. But rather than do that, I can also take a look at some additional options, right? Now, FM is a 100% duty cycle. I'm not duty cycle, but duty factor. Okay, when we talk about duty factors, uh, there are formulas for duty factors that involve, let's say you're on sideband, your duty factor could be any place between 20 and 50%. What that means is you can remove that directly, right, from uh, that total. In other words, if, if it's 20%, you can uh, basically divide or, or multiply uh, 77.5 by dot, uh, dot uh, 2, and that will drastically reduce your power, right? You plug those numbers back into this formula and it works a little better then. It gets down in that area. Uh, also, there's duty cycle calculations. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated. Um, and one thing I'll advise you on, okay, right out of the gate, if you have to start looking at this, if you don't qualify for that initial in, uh, 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 exemption that we don't qualify on my car for. If you can't qualify for that, okay, you saw the way I did the numbers at 100% duty cycle, and I did them for that reason, uh, for the reason of being ultimately conservative in my calculations. If I pass at that, I don't need to go any farther, right? If I don't, I may have to figure some stuff out. Uh, you know, the options are move the antenna or put the antenna higher. Um, another option, of course, is reduce power, right? We talked about that. We see that 10 watts, I'm totally compliant, right? Uh, another option, of course, uh, is uh, basically take a look at duty cycle. For controlled group, you need to look at how many minutes out of six minutes are you transmitting? This can be normally or, uh, you know, out, I, I would suggest when you're starting, figure it out at worst, okay? Um, so let's say you're like me, you get in the car, you ID, and then you may not say anything. I mean, you're less than a minute there. But let's say somebody come back and you're talking. Uh, I might be on for, uh, if, if it's a rag chew, it could be a 50-50 deal, right? So every three out of six minutes, I'm transmitting some given time, right? Uh, that allows me to reduce, you know, uh, of course, Three, um, uh, 3 over 6 is 1 over 2, which is 1 half, right? That allows me to cut this in half, right? Um, if it's third party or what I uh, what I've just said third party, but if, if it's uncontrolled that you're looking at, that's how many minutes out of a 30-minute period you're transmitting, okay? So that's, that's a lot different when you think about it. So let's say that you might have a conversation uh, for... Oh, I don't know. Maybe you have two conversations uh, in a 30-minute period that might last five minutes, one-to-one, -one, something like that. We'll say six. So if I calculate that, right, I'm basically at, um, in a 30-minute time period, I'm really only talking uh, three, about six minutes, right? 
So if that's really what goes on on your radio, and for a lot of amateurs it is, right? You're basically, basically looking at 6 over 30, okay? Or... Let's see if I reduce that. Well, let's just let's just do the math. That's fairly easy. Let's divide six by thirty. That gives me 0.2, okay? So 20% cycle, right? So I can take this 77.5, I can multiply that by 0.2. That puts me down at 15.5 watts. Interesting. So in that case, I would, because I actually ran 15.5 watts here, which was a total accident and unplanned. I'm actually shocked I don't have to do the formula again, but we already did the formula for that number. Well, what do you think of that? Uh, so guess what? That means I'm well under the power density. So if that's realistic, right? If I might have a couple conversations totaling a total of six minutes over that 30 minute period, that is the correct way to calculate. Anyway, so now you get the idea how this all works. Now, the big part of this is you're going to put this all in some sort of a report, okay? Uh, whether it's just a page where you're listing, okay, here's the radio, here's the coax, here's the antenna that's on the end of it, here are the frequencies that I'm calculating for, and of course, if, if you're dual band, you know, you got to calculate for 40, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, 70 centimeters or, you know, 440 as well. Uh, but... You can calculate that into a report and give all the numbers that you worked with, justify your uh, uh, concept of what you're basically stating if you have to go into uh, duty cycle, and get it all on paper and reported, okay? Once that's done, you stick it in a file, and the only time you ever have to change it or re-review it is if you change anything. You know, you may have to pull it out and go, oh, I looked at this on this date and nothing has changed and maybe initial it for that date. But this way you're keeping the records that the FCC is asking us to keep. OK, so here are the formulas we used. Um, we've got, of course, calculate uh, up at the top there, calculate coax for loss. So we take the feet of the coax that we actually have installed, we divide it by 100, then we multiply it by whatever that loss dB is, and uh, in our example here, what we have is we have 18, the length, divided by 100 feet, which would be the uh, total coax uh, loss length, and we would multiply that by that loss, which is 6.2, that would give us 1.12, which is our total loss of the coax uh, between the radio and the bottom of the antenna. Now, we know that we added another 3 dB to that, right, for gain, but we kind of did some backwards kind of stuff, and it worked out to be 1.9 dB, which is net, right? So you'd take 3 dB and subtract uh, the 1.1 from it would probably be the easiest way. And you'd end up with 1.9. So how do we calculate how that affects our total uh, power output or our uh, oh, um, uh, uh, radiated power? And that would be taking our uh, 10 watts, right? and multiplying that by 10 to the power of whatever that dB gain is, which is 1.2 divided by 10, which in our particular case, 10 watts times 10 to the power of 1.9 divided by 10 gives us 15.5 watts for our effective uh, reflect, uh, uh, excuse me, our effective radiated power, okay, or ERP. Um, hey, you know, what if you had, oh, I don't know, what if you had 100 feet of coax, right? So that would mean that you'd have a negative dB, right? Because you would have uh, 6.2 and then you'd, you know, uh, as a negative number and 3 as a positive number, you'd actually come up negative 3.2 dB. 
that would reduce your power level, right? So, uh, you know, just for fun, let me show you how to do that. So if I had a negative 3.2 dB or a loss coming out of the antenna, how would that work? Well, let's go ahead and take our 10, uh, uh, 10 watts uh, PEP. And it's the same formula. It really is. The only difference is we're going to multiply 10 to the power of negative because we have a negative 2.2 dB. Divide that by 10. And guess what? Now look at what our um, effective radiated power is. It's only 4.7 or 4.8 watts, okay? So you're actually taking on more of a loss. That's the time that you want to look at reducing something because you're losing a lot of energy there. But just a thought. Anyway, my goodness. Well, with that, you know, I hope this has helped. I hope it's made it a little bit clear. Uh, there are still so many questions like, oh, you know, are we going to have a worksheet that the FCC is actually going to want us to fill out? Uh, is there going to be some sort of standard form that we can use to put all this information in so we have it on file so when the FCC looks at it, you know, they, they know all the values and where to look for them? Um, I don't know. None of us know yet. Uh, FCC has been kind of slow forthcoming with the information. Uh, but, you know, today is May 2nd, 2021. Tomorrow, all these rules go into effect. So, I'm hoping that we get this video out, and I hope that it helps you. Anyway, till then, I'm AG6AG. Wow. Um, that video was kind of hard to put together. There's a lot of math in it, and uh, I, I was trying to make it as clear as I could on the mathematics that you got to do to do this. Uh, the next video, I hope I'll be a little cleaner. I hope that I'll know a little bit more if there's forms and stuff that we can use. For right now, this at least gets you the math, so you're making your best effort. For your station. Um, and again, I did this on VHF because, hey, let's face it, uh, technician class operators have probably had the least training when it comes to these kinds of issues. So I want to make sure that this gets out to the folks that are really going to need it right away, uh, especially new technicians as they come into the hobby. The next video on this will uh, be on HF. Uh, which is uh, basically the same thing, just, uh, you know, bigger numbers and different calculations. So anyway, with that, hey, thanks for checking this out. I really appreciate it. And hey, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I got lots of videos just like this, all pointed pretty much at uh, ham radio, amateur radio, or computer science. So if you're involved in either one of those and curious, please go out and uh, check them out. Uh, also, uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'd really like to hear from you. Please just make them down below in the comment section, all right? Uh, I try to answer all questions within a day. Uh, if you like the video, just say, hey, I like the video. I may not respond to you, but I appreciate every comment that's out there, all right? For now, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. Hope to hear you on the air.